Starting your data analysis journey can be overwhelming, especially when you're navigating unfamiliar tools and concepts. Trust me, I've been there and I know it can be tough, really tough. I made simple mistakes in the past that slowed down my progress by months. And I'm here today to tell you how to avoid these mistakes and give you actionable tips on what exactly you should do to progress your data analysis journey faster to land your next analyst job way sooner. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mo Chen and I work as a data and analytics manager and I have over six years of experience working with complex big data in the financial services industry. And that's more than enough of me for now. Let me jump into mistake number one that I have made in the past and I see the overwhelming majority of the people make on an everyday basis. And this mistake is trying to learn too many tools at once. I know it's tempting to learn every data tool out there, Excel, SQL, Python, Tableau, Power BI, and more. But this can leave you overwhelmed, unfocused, not to mention wasting too much time learning unnecessary things, forgetting most of your learnings, and just about getting to a mediocre level at most tools, rather than mastering one or two instead. So here's what you should do. Start with one tool that's beginner friendly, like Excel. Before moving to more advanced tools, get really good at Excel and then move on to SQL, which is the cornerstone of retrieving data from relational databases. Once you're comfortable with writing SQL queries, which to be honest, with the help of AI nowadays is not that difficult, then move on to other tools like Tableau, Power BI, or even coding in Python or R. Pick one tool and stick with it for 30 days. For instance, master Excel by practicing formulas, charts, and pivot tables every day for a month. Big mistake number two I see people make, and I was definitely guilty of this too, is focusing too much on theory and not enough on practical application. It's easy to get stuck reading about data analysis concepts, watching data analysis videos on technical skills without actually practicing them. Remember, data analysis is a hands-on skill. Make sure you work on small, real-world projects like analyzing your own expenses or tracking fitness data, for example. Use public datasets from websites like Kaggle or data.gov to practice. And if doing something completely on your own sounds intimidating, try some guided projects like my Ultimate Excel projects, where I give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to actually do real-world data analysis across multiple projects and use cases. Think of using AI and working with large language models, for example. The best way I was able to quickly learn how to write good and effective prompts was through trial and error and testing those prompts myself. Now, if you also want to learn the core techniques for creating effective prompts, there is of course a more structured way to do this than my trial and error method. I'd recommend you get started with the Google Prompting Essentials course on Coursera. This is a recent addition, and from a data analysis perspective, it has so much to offer. You'll learn to use AI to extract information and automate your workflow. You'll learn to leverage AI to interpret and visualize your datasets. And you'll also learn how to use AI to do the boring, repetitive tasks like data cleaning and formatting, which, to be honest, is definitely one of my top use cases. This course was developed by AI experts at Google, and once you complete it, you will of course get a certificate that you can add to your LinkedIn profile and your resume. So if you want to learn how to write effective prompts to speed up your data analysis workflow, then get started with the Google Prompting Essentials course by Coursera using the link in the description below. And a huge shout out to Coursera for sponsoring this video. Next up, mistake number three that almost every beginner makes, overlooking the business question. I've mentored lots of people, and I know for a fact that many beginners jump straight into analyzing data without understanding the problem they're trying to solve. This can and will easily lead to irrelevant or incomplete analysis. To fix this, here's what you should do. Before starting, 
ask yourself this. What decision am I trying to support? What question does this data need to answer? Write down the question or goal clearly and refer back to it throughout your analysis. In my own ultimate data portfolio, every project of mine starts with the goal or the problem statement. Every single one. If you're not solving a data problem, you're just playing around with data. So the next time you work with data, spend five minutes writing down the goal. For example, I want to find out which product category has the highest sales this quarter. All right, let's move on to mistake number four, not asking for feedback. Most of you probably work in isolation, and I bet there are times when you're unsure if you're doing things correctly. Without feedback, it's hard to know if you're improving. So do this. Share your work with others, even if it's just a simple Excel chart. Join online communities on Reddit or Discord, or post a small project or analysis on LinkedIn asking for feedback. Mistake number five is less common, in my opinion, than the previous four I listed, but nevertheless still happens quite often from what I see. And this mistake is failing to visualize your data. It's easy to get caught up in numbers and forget that charts and visuals can make your findings much clearer. Skipping visualization means your insights may go unnoticed or misunderstood. So here's what you should do. Use simple visualizations like bar charts or line charts to make your data more understandable. Avoid overly complex visuals. Keep them clear and easy to read. I really like the charts produced by The Economist and The Financial Times, for example. Feel free to check them out for some inspiration. And that's it. This was a short one today packed with lots of mistakes that you should 100% avoid and with actionable tips that you can implement immediately. Like right now. If you enjoyed watching this video, then you should definitely check out all of the other data analysis resources on my website at mochan.info, and you should also check out these videos right here. Thanks so much for taking just a little time out of your day to watch this, and I shall see you in the next one.